Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And they that dwell 
morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And this is kind of a preview of what we'll hear again uh, in its fullness in just a few days on Christmas. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Oh, the hills 
people walking in darkness have seen a great light. We can really relate to the first half of that verse from the prophet Isaiah. It feels like we have been walking in the darkness and wilderness of the year 2020. And even in the midst of this wilderness, as we have offered our laments and sadness and struggles to God, we seek the light of a new day dawning in our future. In just a few short days, we will remember with great hope the birth of our Lord Jesus. We will remember at Christmas the light that came to earth that day. We celebrate that God would come close to us. So much so that God would become incarnate, a human person, to walk with us and to show us the way to life. So before we move too quickly out of the wilderness, let us first consider how God has been with us this year. In the wilderness, in the darkness, and how God is inviting us to move out of the darkness into light. I read a powerful Advent reflection recently uh, by the Franciscan sister, Leah DeLeo, who wrote these words. We have a God who gets absurdly close, so incredibly close that we are forced to discover the face of God in all the mess of the world, no matter how confusing or abrasive, whether that's racial injustice, terrorism, poverty, or climate change. Too often we want a God who will hear our cries and fix things for us, who will be strong enough to push our painful experiences away. But the mystery of Christmas tells us otherwise. It's not that God is deaf to the cry of the poor. It is rather that God is poor. It is not that God does not see our tears, but God too is weeping. Only a humble God who bends so low to pitch it all the way in love can heal us and make us whole. In this Christ child, we receive good news that will be great joy for all people. That this God that we, that we worship, this God who at times can feel distant, this God who has been and always will be, is the same God who walks with us in the wilderness and in the darkness. I'm reminded of the quote by the German theologian and mystic Meister Eckhart, who wrote, It is in darkness one finds the light. In sorrow, this light is nearest to us. So perhaps God has been with us all along in this wilderness year. In fact, this God has brought us to this moment where we can celebrate Christmas even in the midst of darkness. Because we know in the darkness, the light shines even brighter, giving us an eternal hope. So may we have hope in this kind of God. In this God who would send prophets and angels. In this God who would speak through all creation. And in this God, who would send God's very self in a child to be so absurdly close to us that even in the wilderness, even in the darkness, even in 2020, we may find hope and have it for us. I would like to close with a, a prayerful reflection. And so I invite you to so just receive these words, and may they draw you deeper into prayer as we soon enough end Advent and enter into the 12 days of Christmas, the season of Christmas. Let us pray in the darkness until we see God's light emerge. Let us wait with hope-filled hearts as Christ's image grows within us and shows us life. Let Christ speak to us and teach us love. 
Shall we open our hearts to be his hope? Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Hello, everyone. All right. See my matching socks? Thank you for all of your gifts to us, especially the environmental beauty that surrounds us, our relationship with your people, and your Son, whom we worship and adore. We reflect on that gift and echo the angel's message, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to all people. We have been walking in darkness of disease and despair, but you have brought us a great light. We rejoice in that light. As we depart from this musical joy and praise, may we go in the assurance that your love will thrive and increase through our lives and relationships as we continue in Jesus' example of love, healing, and respect for all of your wonderful creation. Amen. Pray. Hey. 